Hey everybody, I hope everybody's been having a great summer and looking forward to the fall season, which I know I am because everything starts picking back up for, uh, for us guys around here. It's been a little slow. Uh, but I had a special request come in from a guy who, uh, a gentleman from, uh, I think, I believe he's out in Kansas, and he was asking me about how I approach people with darker skin, uh, more specifically African American, you know, Indian, um, you know, in some cases, Spanish, people who have darker skin tones. And I will say this has been a video that I've actually had been putting a little bit of thought into something similar. I had been thinking about putting a video out uh, just talking about drawing people who don't look like you because I really feel like one of the things that has really helped me grow as an artist was whenever I broke out of my comfort zone and started working with artists who were who didn't look like me, who were from... Uh, and I have to talk about my days at Cedar Point. I, I, that was the first time I really worked with a lot of artists who were uh, a real mixing pot of, 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 you know, just different ethnicities and backgrounds. And uh, I really felt a lot of the a lot of my biggest growth happened that summer at Cedar Point. And, and a lot of that was thanks to there again working with these different people who who, who I learned so much from. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to jump right into this demo, and I'm going to be using the color sticks today. This is going to be real similar to what I did with the uh, with the chalk and glove, uh, but I am going to try to cover some more, a uh, little more in-depth uh, concepts. And as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you get something out of this video. Okay, we're going to jump right in here with Michael and his wife here. So... I'm going to start off coloring in some of the... I pre-sketched this caricature, obviously. I did do a light, uh, light sketch with a uh, light blue pencil. I normally don't do that, but for the sake of uh, having it ready, ready for the demo, I... So I'm basically coloring in the shirts and everything first. There's no real order that you have to follow with this, but uh, I just decided I wanted to do the clothing and background first and do the faces last. The thing, the thing is, is. Uh, color sticks and, and, and I'll, there again I'll go back to my other video about the uh, the, the uh, chalks the reason I do the chalk I prefer the chalks over these is they're just they're a lot faster and I, I think you can get a lot better better quality out of it but you know that's not saying these are terrible by any any means they just when you're working long hours in an amusement park they're a little harder on harder a little harder on the uh, fingers in my opinion so at least some guys that do some really fantastic work with the color sticks. So anyway, I'm going to color the uh, the clothing in, and I'm going to go. I'm going to start with okay with him. I'm going to start with the skin tone. Now, looking at his picture here, um, I'm going to look at the brightest part of the picture, uh, which is going to be on his nose or on his forehead, and look at that color. Now, that color is not white and it is not a flesh tone, it is a yellow ochre. So my base tone for him is going to be yellow ochre. Now the key with this is you want to go light with it. You don't want to go in balls to the wall heavy because there again it's a light. And you still want, you still want to kind of follow the contours of the face even with this. See what I'm doing on the cheeks and on the nose? Because even though it is a base tone it is, you know, you still want to contour a bit. So, color all that in. And I don't think I really need to put in on his lips because his lips are going to be a little bit different because his lips are going to have a little bit more pink in it. Uh, but there again, follow, kind of following those contours of the face. Okay. And real, real light on the nose. Don't, don't get too heavy. Um, I will mention this when it comes when it comes to ethnic skin types or, or any skin type or hair. Period. I, I don't I don't want to just say I'm thinking about uh, people with darker skin, but but anybody. Uh, one of the things I've always done 
as an artist is I'll go Okay, now I'm just going to leave his his uh, basic skin tone in right now. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to her. Now, like there again, her her face is a little is a little darker than his. So, looking at her basic skin tone, she's going to be a combination of two colors. She, you're going to have this this brown, but I'm going to go real light with it, very light, just a very light touch. Same thing, kind of contouring around the edges there. Okay. Real, very light touch. And this is where the tooth of that paper really helps. If this paper didn't, the really slick paper that doesn't have any tooth to it, you, you really can't can't do this at all okay so just a very 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 subtle light touch so that I will go ahead and say this one of the one of the tricks with this is with anything is, is you're building things up now I am going to go in with a little bit of peach on her face because she you know there's not a one-size-fit-all um, color you know, d depending on how accurate you want to try to be with your colors, uh, you really, you, sometimes you have to mix, mix some. Now her lips, now she does have some pink on her bottom lip, but her top lip, so I'm going to do that, I'm going to get that pink in there. And there again, following the contour. Now with the lips, you are going to leave an almost white space on hers because she has a little bit of a shine there but maybe not to totally white I'm even gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of pink on the top but it's gonna get immediately covered up now I'm gonna go with a uh, little bit the more of the reddish brown on that and I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling out some uh, some shadow and color that in Same deal on the bottom lip. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go back to Michael again. And while I've already got this color in my hand, I'm going to start doing some of his uh, mid tones and dark. Now, keep in mind, this is a three-dimensional object, so you're going to have highlights, you're going to have shadow, and you can see the shadow from his face is coming more from the right. So, you know, I'm going to get the side, the side of the, uh, you try to use the side of this and get that nice gradient there. That's one of the tricks to working fast with these. When they get worn down to where they don't have any flat surfaces, they're not as good anymore. It was one of the things we always loved at Cedar Point was fresh color sticks because you could really, really zip through some caricatures with those things. All right, and Michael is going to have a little bit of shadow on the nose, or not really shadow, but dark. I guess you could say, I guess it is shadow. But I'm just looking at the picture, and I'm looking where those dark areas are. Kind of just coloring those in a bit. And you got his little dimple going on there. And and I'm just gonna, like I say, I'm just gonna keep coming back over this. Basically following the same pattern I did with the uh, base tone, um, only not filling in quite as much to, uh, to leave those highlights. And 
And I, I will, I'll, I'll admittedly uh, say that I am, I don't feel like I'm the greatest person uh, when it comes to color with the color sticks. Um, I've seen some guys do some amazing stuff with these things. I'm not bad. Now I'm kind of using, I'm almost, almost drawing, almost like uh, basically shading three dimensional objects here. You know, obviously, uh, if, if you have any kind of art background, you know, you think of the, sh the face shape, you think of everything as three dimensional objects, nothing is a flat object. So you keep, you keep in mind those highlights and shadows and uh, of course, midtones, which we've already covered as you color this. All right, Michael has a little bit of a birthmark or something on on his head, so I'll color that in. All right, and of course the hair. Of course, I'm gonna go over that with some black too for the hair. And his chin, if you'll notice now, looking at the picture, you know, most of the darkness on his face is on, on that right side, and then the rest of his Down in this area, uh, looking at the picture, I'm gonna go very, very, very lightly with a little bit of purple. Now, the reason I use purple there is because there's a shadow there. I'm gonna go underneath his neck a little bit with it too. And dark, pur your purples and your blue colors, if you've ever studied color theory, those type of colors recede, that, or, they, or they're pushed back, uh, as in a shadow or something. Wherein your, your brighter colors, your yellows and your oranges, and your, uh, those are gonna be colors that are gonna you know, be pulled forward. So, you know, throwing a little bit of a, a, a subtle shadow in there, that just kinda helps. In my opinion, I think it helps the picture pop a little bit. Go just a little, little filling his hair. Even though I did a lot of cross hatching and stuff on his hair, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of black just to kind of kind of fill that in a bit. And, and even on his eyebrows. Now and finally I'm gonna come in with a little bit of shadow on the shirt. Yeah, um, black is actually not the best color for even though you'd think it would be, it's not. I'm actually gonna use my dark blue to kind of pull out some of those lines on his shirt. So anyway, I think he's about done. One of the last things I'm gonna do on him is on the eyes. One of the things that I always do for shadow is I use, I don't use, I, on, on white surfaces, put a little bit of blue. Uh, just, I think it just helps pop it. And I'm gonna put just a, his, his upper lips are, is not really that dark, but I'm gonna put just a little bit of brown. Just kinda help that a bit. All right. And I think he's about done. Just a couple more little, hit over a little bit, a couple more of those darker areas. The brown again. And I think I'm gonna call him done. Now we're gonna go back to her. Okay, same deal. Uh, I've already got this brown in my hand, so I'm gonna start basically coloring in those dark areas. Now there, there again, like I said, her skin tone's a bit darker than his. So she's gonna have a lot more, a lot more in on her skin tones.
if you'll notice I'm not afraid to turn my paper upside down uh, it's actually kind of might be a little bit of a bad habit to get into because when you're working on an easel at a music park or out with the public you can't really flip paper around like that so but I'm left-handed so that's that's almost like a handicap when it comes to coloring so it's really I prefer to be able to flip my paper around and just really get it drawing from different angles and get the it's a lot easier to get those quick shadows and stuff in there so same deal with her so as you see I'm just hitting those dark areas now one, one of the one thing about this picture here is although though we were in the same area in the same room one of the bad things about working from two different source photos if you're working from a photo is the shadows aren't the same so the shadow from his face is coming more from the right and hers is more from the left um, but it's caricature so <laughs> Sometimes I guess you can get by with that it's it's really not right artistically but you know what, what are you gonna do you could try to fix the shadows but And the same deal when I'm when I'm coloring in, I'm just going, I'm, I'm I'm paying attention to where the lights here are. And if you'll notice, when I work from dark to light, I try not to leave any any harsh. Uh, I try to make everything smooth. Same deal. Uh, I'm gonna go and we'll hit over hers with a little bit of this this flesh, just as a unifier. Just kind of helps pull everything together. Uh, might go back over some of these. Just kind of same same thing I did with him. I'm gonna try to render those three of these shapes a bit. Trying to keep everything consistently and smooth so that everything flows. Now, uh, one, of, one of the things that, well, now you notice on her shirt, she does have a pattern on her shirt, which I, I like to try to get those details when I can. Um, but depending on what type of picture you're doing, this is more of, you know, this is a quick style, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Now, when it comes to hair, um, <clears throat> her hair does appear black, from what I can tell. But one of the things I have noticed with a lot of uh, darker hair is a lot of times there'll be a lot of browns in there too. So don't don't make the mistake of thinking that that, that uh, all African American women have black hair because they don't. Uh, uh, that was a, that's a funny story. I remember one of the things I used to be terrible about. Oh, by the way, I just used blue as a base tone for her hair um, because that way whenever I color the hair in, if there's any, any spots that I miss, it won't be a totally white spot. Uh, but anyway, real quick story, back when I first started doing these, one of the things I was, probably, probably was my weakest sketch was was was, uh, was black women or African American women. You know, I, I kind of make it, a, I made it a personal vendetta to be, uh, to get good. Because uh, you know, there again, I, I like drawing. I like drawing. I like people uh, paying me for my drawings. I like to be able to make a living. And you and you can't. And it's hard to do that when you can only draw one race. Uh, because you know, America and the world is made up of a lot of different people. And, and the more, uh, I mean, you know. I'm not trying to change the world. I'm just doing, trying to do my part to be uh, be a good artist and to spread a little love and a little bit of joy to people. I love all people. Uh, that's something my mother taught me from a very young age. I've never I've never been what you would call a bigoted person. Um, I wasn't I wasn't around a lot of people of different races as a child, but that wasn't because of uh, anyone 
trying to, you know, keep me separated from them. It's just didn't have, there wasn't a lot of kids that lived in my neighborhood. Uh, so I didn't really start being around different races and things until I started school, and then, and then uh, more so when I got into caricatures. So, as you noticed, on the teeth and things, I'm using blue. Got to be real careful, though, real light with that stuff. Now, her earrings appear to be, uh, it's like a gold, so I'm just going to hit over with the yellow. I mean, it, it's okay. You, you're cartooning things, so you, you can do some simplification. But one thing I will warn against is um, don't use that as a crutch. Um, I've seen some caricature artists who, uh, who are newer. Uh, when they do the bodies and stuff, they, they draw... Uh, that is, you know, I, I think it's because they don't have, they haven't grasped a good uh, concept of anatomy. <clears throat> and not that I'm, not that I'm the, you know, perfect anatomist or anything, but uh, I've noticed sometimes they'll draw stuff wrong. I, I know one artist uh, who always draws people with, I think it's either two left or two right hands. And whenever approached by it, they'll always laugh it off and say, oh, that's caricature. No, that's an excuse. Don't ever try to use caricature as an excuse for being a bad artist. If anything, uh, and, and, I, and I will say this, I have, I feel like that caricature has improved my skills in other areas of art um, just because of what you learn in observation. So I think this, this caricature is about done. I'm going to go just over her a little bit more. And that's the cool thing about this is, is if, if there again, I started light, so you can always add more color and build it up to a certain degree. There's always going to be limits. Um, if you try to put too much color stick on here at some point, it will start it will start gobbing up. So um, you just have to, and, and I'm going to do the same thing with her. I'm going to go on these really dark areas. I'm going to go with a little bit of, just a little bit of hint of blue just to make that recede a little bit. See how that see how that does, and right here under the nose, a little, just a touch of blue and under the neck. And see, I'm using a little more on her there again because um, she has a little bit darker skin tone than him. He, he's a little bit more of a yellow ochre, and hers is a little bit more of a uh, just that warm brown. One final thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit a little bit of white. I, I try to avoid using actual white on a caricature because it basically all it does is smears the colors. It actually acts more as a blending agent than it does actually showing up as white. But I'm going to go over some of those highlighted areas with a white just to kind of blend it in a bit. Hit a little bit on her lip there. And then I want to go back over that lip again and darken the rest of it up just a bit. You can really as I'm sure you can see, what I'm from what I'm doing here, you can really uh, you can really spend some time on a, on any kind of piece of art, not just a caricature, but you could spend a lot of time detailing. But I don't want to hit it because you keep thinking it's done, and then you look back and you're like, oh, I need to darken that up a bit or this up a bit. Think one thing that one thing about it is whatever you do, um, you, you know, I, I try not to be too sloppy. I try to, 
I, I always try to call it controlled chaos, so that even even these little bit of background stuff, if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, I, I feel like you should do it right. Don't just scribble some color on there for the sake of scribbling some color. Give it a little bit of a purpose. So I think I'm gonna call this done or abandon. 